They say almost 90% of people aged 13 to 38 want to be an influencer and they want to make money on YouTube. YouTube is the third most popular social media network and the second largest search engine. And with the rise of video marketing, it's only going to get larger. So figure out what your content should be about, learn your target audience, grab a camera, and let's hustle. What is up my side hustlers? If you are looking to turn your passion into a profit to boost that cash flow, you have come to the right place. Thank you for joining me. My name is Justin. Every episode we dig into the art of the side hustle to learn the ins and the outs and what it takes to make it happen. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for all the latest updates and don't forget to hit the like button. This way more people can learn what we're doing. According to a study, people will collectively watch over a billion hours of YouTube videos every single day. Now that's more than the time spent watching Netflix and browsing videos on Facebook combined. With close to 2 billion active monthly users, your ability to reach a worldwide audience is unparalleled. I read that by 2025, about half of the people under 32 years old will have cut the cable cord. I know I sure have, I did it a couple years ago, and it feels great. Barbara McDonald, she's a product manager at YouTube who serves as one of the co-hosts on the Creator Inside video series, said, if you have a subject you're passionate about, give it a try. It's right on strategy is what we're talking about. So now you know what direction you're heading with with your content. Here are some ways that you can earn income from your YouTube channel. The first thing you need to do is become a YouTube partner. To do this, you need a minimum of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watched hours. Once you get that accomplished, set up your Google AdSense account, and then turn on monetization. Nearly all YouTubers earn the majority of their income from ad revenue generated, and it's all based on the number of views and subscribers you have. Revenue really grows when videos are family friendly, in English, and longer than eight minutes. The second thing you need to do is sell some merchandise. Bryce Hall makes over a million dollars a quarter selling his merch. Now, while that probably won't happen for you and I immediately, it is certainly possible. And if your fan base is supportive and wants to rep your brand, having a merch store can be very lucrative. The third thing you want to do is create sponsored content. Once your channel grows large enough, you will get approached by companies to promote their product or service on your videos. One thing you need to note is any sponsored content must be noted or else you can face some serious penalty. Now, everybody in the crypto space knows John McAfee. He's the largest paid shill. And he's currently actually sitting in prison for several things, but one of the biggest accusations against him is taking money to pump projects to his millions of followers without disclosing he was being paid by these companies. Don't be like John. Always disclose your sponsorships and paid content. And the fourth thing you want to do is get your fans to pay you directly. Now, with live streaming, you can turn on super chats and stickers. These features are going to let your viewers purchase chat messages that stand out, and sometimes they actually pin them to the top of the chat feed. Now these donations range anywhere from one to $500 and YouTube takes about 30% right off the top. Being successful as a YouTuber can be extremely lucrative. The top five YouTubers collectively made over $115 million in earnings in 2020. Let's take a look at who they are and some of their numbers. Number five, Markiplier. Now these are gaming videos, original comedy sketches, animated parodies, and other bits of entertainment now they have earnings over $19 million with 3.1 billion views and over 27 million subscribers. Coming in at number four, Rhett and Link. Their show Good Mythical Morning is a great comedy offering that started back in 2012. Their earnings exceeded $20 million. They had over 2 billion views and over 40 million subscribers. Number three on our list, Dude Perfect. If you like sports and comedy, this is perfect for you. Their earnings were about $23 million with almost 3 billion views and they've got a huge subscriber count at 57 and a half million. Number two on our list in the top five is Mr. Beast. Now he's been credited with pioneering a genre of YouTube videos that center on expensive stunts. His earnings also exceeded $24 million with 3 billion views and almost 50 million subs. Mr. Beast is truly that, a beast, but he's also very generous. He also raised $20 million to plant 20 million trees. Now that brings us to our number one earning YouTuber in 2020, Ryan Kaji. According to his channel, Ryan loves doing lots of fun things like pretend play, science experiments, music videos, skits, challenges, DIY arts and crafts, and more. Ryan's World, or formerly Ryan Toys Review, took people by surprise when he started his extremely popular and very lucrative channel uh, to review toys at the age of four. 
His 2020 earnings were just under $30 million with over 12 billion views and over 41 million subscribers. Okay, so you're probably not gonna hit these numbers in a year or two, but what you can do is see it's possible. One channel I've personally seen explode in growth over the past couple years is my really good friend. For today's episode, I'm gonna do an interview with my good friend and podcast co-host Ben from BitBoy Crypto. Ben has developed his YouTube channel into the largest cryptocurrency channel on the internet. I'd say he's got the side hustle down. All right, here we go. Thanks for joining me, Ben. I really appreciate it. You know, one of the things that we want to do on this series is just talk about side hustles. And most specifically on this actual episode is the side hustle of building a successful YouTube channel. And that's something you've done very well. If you can, just kind of run through maybe what you've done in the past side hustle wise. Um, just quickly and really yeah. and kind of focus, maybe if you could tell us maybe a point of failure and a point of success besides Bitboy Crypto, because obviously that's where most of your success has happened, you know, over the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, I, I have a successful YouTube channel and I can tell a lot of people how to do the right stuff because for so long I did the wrong stuff and it was so such a big failure for so long. And then all of a sudden we turn it on, things change, but this is far from my only side hustle or first side hustle. Uh, basically what happened is I used to work in a car wash, uh, and I wanted to start an online business. So I started a ticket company and that was in 2011 and it went mega successful pretty much overnight. It was my first, you know, entrepreneurial kind of endeavor. And, uh, you know, it, it went from making like, you know, I was making six figures within the first year and, you know, I was making, you know, $25,000 a year at the car wash. So that was like really a lot of money. I'd been able to quit that job after about four months. And I did that for years, but the problem was, is, you know, eventually I, I ran into some problems with the business and it folded and, you know, my income got cut down like 80% overnight or 90% overnight pretty much. And it was a lot to take on. But the thing is, is I'd already had this fire lit inside of me because I knew how much money was out there right. and I knew how, you know, to build something successful. Um, so I started all kinds of different businesses trying to recapture what I had with the ticket business. Uh, I did a blog business at one point where I ran several different blogs and tried to make money on AdSense. And uh, that was a big come up. We did really well for like two or three months and then that crashed and burned. And so that was a big failure. You know, we made about $40,000 in three months. It was me and my brother that were doing it. And it was very successful for three months. And then Google AdSense came in and didn't like what we were doing and, you know, ripped our revenue. And Google still owes me like $30,000 to this day. They'll never get me. You'll but never see that for sure. Not a chance. So... Uh, that was one thing I did. I also tried to, uh, I, I did website building for a long time, which is one of the easiest side hustles to start actually, is to learn how to design websites on WordPress. And then, you know, everybody needs a website and it's an expanding market. So did that for a while. It was, you know, had some mediocre success with that. Uh, then I started trying to sell a course where I showed people how to make money online. Which we with, know is one of the, the biggest ways yeah. for you to make money online is to tell someone how much. And that's, you know, we've talked about that on right. the Money Gang many times. Yeah. And so I tried to do that and show people how to make money building websites. And that was probably my most epic failure. I never sold a single course. Um, and I thought it was good information, but it's just one of those things out there um, that, you know, if you don't have a lot of the flair and the marketing background, it doesn't matter how successful people would be if they took your course. They don't ever see it. And nobody ever bought it. So that was a big failure. Um, and I've tried to do so many other things throughout the years. Uh, but those are some of the ones that really stand out to me. Yeah, absolutely. I know that, you know, for me personally, and this is something that we were actually involved with together, was the, uh, you know, we tried to do a course, the regular guy's guide to crypto. Yeah. Cryptofordudes.com. Yeah. You know, we, uh, I, we learned a lot. And I think that's, you know, with kind of upping the studio game and kind of the look and feel of what you're doing here mm -hmm. now was almost a result of that. Because we were shooting that in Austin, Texas. And we just didn't have the right look and feel for what we were doing and yeah. how it all turned out. Well, it, we, we did pretty well with that course. I mean, we, you know, made, made some money with it. We covered our costs and then had some profit and uh, a lot of people liked it and they did well with it. We didn't feel like it was, you know, it probably wasn't our very best work. And that's the thing when you get in this, you know, when you get into the world of self-starting and entrepreneurship and you doing your own business, like, you find a lot of times your standards for yourself are higher than even the people that buy your products. And so we, we're always working to, you know, uh, up that quality. So like one of the most recent episodes that we had on New Money Gang is we talked about seat time and what it takes to build something successful. If you could estimate um, what it took you to build BitBoy Crypto, your research, your filming, mm -hmm. editing, and then reviewing it to make sure that it was good to go. I mean, yeah. what would like a typical video you think take you every single day to 
to accomplish. When you, and this yeah. is back when you were doing just one a day when you started, right? Yeah, when I was back, well, I mean, really when I started, I was doing, a lot of days I was doing two, even in the early days. But I was doing a, quali- a quantity instead of quality plays. So I was really just trying to put out a lot of content, but I wasn't like doing a lot of editing and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, not really that much time. I mean, it'd take me a few hours per day at the beginning, but you saw the results of just putting in a few hours right. a day. You know? Well, you know what, you bring up a good point, and that's something that we actually just talked about today uh, when we were filming an episode of New Money Gang, was when you build that channel. I mean, you just, if like right when you get started, like you pump out the content so that you've got enough information for people to check yeah. out build those viewable hours so that you can start to monetize because again you know that's the whole point of like really what we're talking about is when you build your youtube channel you want it to be big enough so that you can monetize it because i mean if if you're just doing say well i guess that's even a bad example toy reviews as a kid i mean that kid ryan kaji just blew it up <laughs> so much he's, he's he's doing very well uh but yeah i, I think that You know, when it comes to YouTube and putting that content out there, there's a very interesting chart that shows that it there is a direct correlation between how many videos you make and the average amount of time it takes you to get a certain number of subscribers. So, you know, to get to a hundred thousand subscribers, I think it's an average of like, you know, twelve to fifteen hundred videos that people have to make to get to that many subscribers. Now there's always gonna be people that are outliers that just, you know, pop up overnight and you know, do really well because maybe they're attractive or they got a really specific skill set or they're extra personable or they made a lot of money, whatever it is. Uh, but your average person that starts a YouTube channel is going to take you twelve to 1,500 videos to be able to get to 100,000 subscribers. It's not a quick thing. You know, you don't just start and then overnight, you know, unless, you know, you're branching out and doing a second channel like we do with New Money Gang or Hit Network. Those obviously are going to catch a lot more, uh, you know, viewers and, and subscribers because we already have a platform. But for somebody just starting out, Mm-hmm. It's a grind, and to think that you're just going to be able to do it quickly, it just doesn't happen that way. Right. So, what would you say to someone who's just getting started with a YouTube channel, and they find themselves, you know, struggling to pick up subscribers or views? You know, like because you saw that, and we've talked about that before with you know some of the earlier videos where you know you may be four or five hours into you launching your video, and you've got less than a hundred views on it. Like, you know, what like don't give up. I think is probably the yeah, yeah. So I look back, and even a year ago. I mean, a little bit more than a year ago, I was still having some videos that were getting two or 300 views on them, you know, which is unbelievable because we get that in a second, you know, <laughs> these days. And um, I did want to, there were times where I wanted to quit because I just felt like, I guess I just don't know what I'm doing here. I guess that what I'm talking about isn't connecting or maybe it's not educational enough, but I'm not the kind of guy that quits. And so, you know, I kind of took it all as a slap in the face. Like, how dare everyone not watch my videos when right. I put so much content, you know, so much time and effort into it. But what I've learned is, you know, there's a mix of having that resilience, but also having the self-awareness to say that what I'm doing right now isn't working. And so I need to go back to the drawing board. And so eventually it would get to the point where, you know, it would take me five or six hours to do one video and I'd still do two a day because I was putting in a lot more time on the editing and the research and really planning out and writing scripts and, and things like that. So, you know, you do have to, if you're doing YouTube and you don't get to a wall where you feel like you want to quit, then things are coming to you a little bit too easy, you know? Well, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point because, you know, I know, you know, with some of the other stuff that we've done in the past, I mean, especially, you know, when we did the Beards of Bitcoins yeah. podcast and, you know, that it did have a YouTube channel for it. It was meant to be just an audio podcast, but, you know, in staying in true fashion of what we do, you know, we want more content, more yeah. eyes, so put in a YouTube channel. But that was, you know, reinventing it was something we were constantly doing. Yeah. And I don't know if that hurt us or helped us, I think experience-wise, it helped us. For sure. Um, but, you know, like like you said, you know, just banging your head up against the wall, it's like, why can't I get over this hump? You just refine what you're doing. Yeah. Right? And just just change it and make it better any way that you can. Yeah, for sure. I think listening to your audience and finding out what they want. And then also, you know, watching your competitors and, and, and seeing what they're doing well and what they're not doing well and try to find whatever that gap is where there are people that want something and that thing is underserved, you know? So... I think that's what we did here is, you know, there's so much like with the online money making business that is business. That's like, this is the business of telling people how to make money online. Whereas what we're trying to do with this show is actually take people behind the scenes and actually show people how people are making money online. The point of this isn't to sell you a course on how to do it. And I think that's what makes us a little bit different than everybody else out there that I think a lot of those people are obviously preying on people. Absolutely. And so like I just, you know, touched on that a few seconds ago of like listening to your audience when you think about comments, uh, comments that you get on the, whether it's the quality of the video mm-hmm. or like a clickbait thumb, 
thumbnail? Like, w you know, what do you think about that kind of stuff? Like, what plays in your mind, like, when you start to read comments and people are either commenting on yeah. the content that you're putting out or say, you know, your thumbnail, like, oh, this is just a, you know, a click bitty. Yeah, those people are dumb. The, the people... <laughs> The people that are so low IQ that they look at a title or a thumbnail and make decisions based off of that or make judgments about the person making the content mm -hmm. based upon the only thing that works on YouTube, which is clickbait. And, you know, the, the numbers bear that out. If you don't, it doesn't matter how great your content is, if you don't have a, something that's clickable and catchy. And I, I love to talk about the fact, like, this is not new. Clickbait's not new. It's been going on since basically media was created. Right. Every, why do you think the giant headline on your newspaper is catchy? Extra, extra, read all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. All it is, is it's a funnel to get people to the content. And then once they get to the actual content and watch it, my biggest problem with people that make judgments off of thumbnails is that they don't watch the content. If they watch the content, they would see a lot of times that it's good, mm -hmm. but you have to get people there. And the same people complaining are the same people clicking on it. So, and they're probably you know, the same people that are just skimming the headlines, exactly. not reading an article, and then going yeah. on to you know say to their family, "Oh, like this happened in the world." Like, well, you didn't read the article. Like, now nah, it's actually not that. Yeah, not what you're saying. It's not the headline you get. Like, it's to get you there. And this is the big catch twenty two. This is the big conundrum of media, really, which is, you know, you you watch CNN or you watch Fox News, and they're obviously totally different perspectives of the world. And you sit there and you say to yourself, like. Okay, well, how, you know, how are these two places seeing the world in totally different lights? Well, they're not really. Like, they just know how to cater to their audience because that results directly in more income and more revenue and more eyeballs for them. Mm -hmm. And people get mad at that and they say, oh, that's so ridiculous, you know, like, they just need to have, like, a more down-the-middle line, down-the-middle view. That's not how the Internet or media works. Every company ever that tries to do down the middle views, it flops. People say they want that kind of content. But nobody, they, they say they don't want catchy titles or thumbnails, but the numbers don't bear that out. you know. And, and there certainly is a, a certain demographic out there that would prefer that just because they hate clickbait. Right. right? But the reality is it's the only way to be successful in today's business. You see it with you know social media. You see it everywhere. The more catchy something is, the more likely you're going to get somebody there, and then that ultimately leads you to success. To me, the thing is, I want to be able to use that funnel to get people to the content, but then I want to do a good job of giving people what I think they actually need to hear yeah. on the videos and you know things like that. I think it's really important. Well, I think that's a great point. I mean, because like one of the things that I think that you do very well with your channel is you know it's not only the transparency. But it's the relatable content that you yeah. put out. You know, like you know, you may you may have an appointment or something you've got to go do, and you're in your car. So instead of being in the studio, you know, reading off a script or being, you know, doing your live stream, something like that, you're in your car. And like the quality and and just the feel of that is so real and raw when you put that out. I think yeah. people react to that very well because I think some of those videos do just as well as they, some of the studio stuff, if not better. They do way better on average. Yeah, people want to see that. You know, your honest opinion. And what we've seen, I mean, I know there's definitely some some YouTubers out there that when you get them in a very confined and constrict uh, environment where they have a script and they can read it, they come off as very knowledgeable. Yeah. But you get them on a live stream or you get them on kind of an impromptu type moment and they sound like idiots. Yeah. It, it, it really, t it across all niches, not just across crypto, but that does happen in crypto too, where you get people that are just not that knowledgeable and relatable they're just good at research. And right. they can take that research and translate that into a script that gets clicks or gets views and makes them look very smart. But they have a hard time forming those opinions and giving information just from their brain. And so um, people want to see, I think that's one reason why we have the largest channel in crypto is because we offer such a wide variety of what we do. We have very scripted, very research videos mm -hmm. that definitely come up. They're very highly produced and professional. And then, of course, we have the live streams, which is an hour and a half of me filling content and giving news and relating to people and then interacting with the audience. And people love that. And then you have the more concise 10 to 12 minute videos of me driving in my car, walking around with a gimbal, just talking to people and just giving them like my honest thoughts on something. And so I think that variety is something that definitely plays well to an audience. You don't ever want to get pigeonholed into one very yeah. distinct, you know, area. Absolutely. All right. So with that being said, you know, with your, your you know, your three different style of videos mm -hmm. that you do, 
what do you think is, and you don't have to give out numbers, or I mean, we're not looking for that kind of transparency here, but what do you think is the most lucrative or what has really kind of catapulted? Because I think like once you started live streaming, numbers mm. consistently, once you started live streaming, numbers really started to explode. But what do you think that you make the most money on, at least in your videos, as far as if, if it's like ad revenue or sponsorships yeah. or whatever? Well, I mean, the ROI is on the scripted videos, you know, because they take, you know, sometimes about an hour to write, research, write, and record. Because, I mean, the thing is, when you're in any niche for a long time, like, people, like, I don't do eight hours of research for one video, you right. know, obviously. Uh, because a lot of my knowledge in cryptocurrency is built upon all of the research I've done cumulatively and collectively. Over years. Yeah. Right. So, it doesn't take me as much to research a topic as it would someone that's new, that has no knowledge. So... You know, it takes about an hour to get in there and record, and then, you know, the editors edit, they do their thing. Um, so those are about 10 to 12 minutes, whereas the live streams are an hour and 15 minutes. And so we're getting just as many ads on the 10 to 12 minute one as we are on the longer ones. We get super chats and things like that, which are nice. Um, we don't look at super chats as really like a source of revenue. Like, that's fun. We like to interact with the audience. Um, but I would say we've looked at, this channel has really blown up in different ways, and so the first thing that I did that really blew the channel up was doing scripted videos from moving from me just talking, giving my thoughts to being more precise and being more, uh, you know, thoughtful about the way I lay out a video. And that's what really started catching people's attention when I made that big change. Mm -hmm. So, but then what happened is it just feels like when you're doing two or three, at that time we were doing two videos a day, it really felt like it was, even though all the videos were different, it was just the same thing over and over again, the same format. That's when we decided to bring in the live streams. So we brought in the live streams and that brought us another big bump. And now we're doing three videos a day. We're doing a lot more interviews. So now we've got that segment coming in and that's a way to collaborate with other, you know, uh, larger influencers and bring in their audience to my channel as well. So um, ROI, I mean, I got to say that the scripted videos probably have the best, mm -hmm. but in terms of effort, uh, you know, those little off the cuff, just talking to the camera videos, just easy as 10 minutes. Do I make a thumbnail, put it up there? The whole thing takes 20 minutes. Usually. And, and everyone loves it. Like you said, it's just super raw and real and it's, people can relate to that because it's yeah. like your everyday life. So when you think about your channel, where you were when you started, where you are now, obviously mm -hmm. I know you, I know that you used to record in a small room, yeah. almost in a cardboard box yeah. with a painted green screen wall versus what you've built up now. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what would you say, like, if someone is at that green screen phase right now and they want to up their game, like, what's the most important thing that you need to be paying attention to? Is it the quality of your camera? You know, is it the, your editing skills? You know, like, what is going to take someone to that next level? Yeah, I mean, that's really a tough question. I, I'll say for me. For, for me, the thing, the one thing I point back to that really changed everything for me was writing scripts. Yeah. So I had actually done a video with Algorand, which is a crypto project, and they I did a review for them, and they weren't happy with it. They didn't like it. And it's the only time I've ever done a sponsored video where they were like, yeah, we don't like that. And I was really taken aback. I was kind of pissed at them, to be honest with you, when, when they said it. I was very taken aback. And I said, okay, you know what, mother chuckers? I'm going to write the best video you ever saw in your life. So I decided to go do a scripted video. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to use a teleprompter. And that was the singular thing that changed everything on this channel and, at, and, and eventually led to a lot of more evolution. Uh, but I would say for the audience, it doesn't have to be a scripted video necessarily or writing a script that can take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. It's just being thoughtful and careful about what you're doing in your content other than just getting in a rut where you're comfortable doing the same thing over and over again yeah. all the time because it's easy, you know how to do it, you cut corners, you make it quick. That, from going from doing just talking videos with screen records to actually like writing, researching, and reading scripts, and then, what's the even harder thing after that is you gotta go in and now your editing's gotta be a lot more professional as well. I would just say the biggest thing is Find something that can radically shake up what you're doing. Right. You know, it, it, as long as you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's probably not going to lead to a lot of success. So you got to find something that radically changes your videos. And uh, you'll see a lot of times it will take more time and more thought, yeah. and that will lead to better content. Well, I mean, you, you say that, and, like, and that totally makes sense, you're right? Because, like, you know, when you first started, you know, your cuts might have just been a normal cut, and then you learn the jump cut. And that, you know, that just makes it seem mm -hmm. like a continuation versus, like, well, oh, there was a hard cut right here. Yeah. You know stuff like that so and you know the your delivery i think is 
perfect. You know, it's not, you might be reading off a teleprompter, but at this point you're so comfortable, you're almost yeah. conversational and you can be more technical with your delivery. You can talk about things that are more technical, but you don't sound like you're just reading. Yeah. You know, and I think that's that plays a pretty important role in what you're doing. Yeah, the funny thing is, like, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, a lot of times when I do intros, they're not even scripted. They, it comes across like they are. Like, if I'm doing an intro for a, a, an interview or whatever, I've just gotten so comfortable with the camera and knowing how to do that cadence, you mm -hmm. know, the correct way with the delivery. I mean, I could probably work for Uber Eats. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, though, uh, a lot of times... I will be reading through the teleprompter and people wouldn't know this, but I'll actually add more content while I'm reading the teleprompter because Just some ad living, uh, some ad living because I'll get to a point where I'm like, Hmm, I started this point here and I realized like I never actually came back to it. So let me wrap that up real quick. So I'll add an extra line in here or there. It throws my editors off a little bit, but uh, you know, you, when you get very comfortable with that teleprompter and you know things like that, you can do a little, fl you know, add some flair to it to to definitely up the game. Cool. Well, I appreciate you taking time to talk to me. I got one more question, and this is for this is general I mean, general counsel advice for anybody that's looking to start a YouTube channel side hustle uh, or just continue to grow. If you could go back to yourself, say two or three months into when you started your YouTube channel, what would you what advice would you give to yourself? to make it better that earlier? I, I would say to manage your expectations and realize it's gonna be harder than you think. Yeah. Because I really had this idea. Now, obviously when I started my YouTube channel in January 2018, like we had just started this cryptocurrency bear market and excitement was going down. So it was a really hard time to start a channel. Uh, but I thought it was gonna be easy. Like I saw some of these other guys that were like, you know, way bigger than me. I was like, I can do a lot better than them, you know, like just really discounting their work and their effort, right. not respecting the other competitors and the other YouTubers in the game. And just thinking it's just as easy as get on and say words and you'll get a big following. Uh, and so I think if I would have known how hard it was gonna be and how much work it was gonna be and how long it was gonna take me to get to success, I probably would have quit in the beginning, honestly, uh, because I thought it was gonna be really easy and it just wasn't, and I kept working and kept grinding, but I had no idea for years and years. Now, the rewards have paid off, for sure, down the road, and so I'm glad I stuck with it. But I think managing your expectations, and a lot of it has to do with judgments. You know, like, you know, as they say, whenever you, you point a finger at somebody else, you're, you're pointing four back at yourself. <laughs> and so I would look at these other YouTubers, and I would judge them. I'd be like, this guy doesn't even really know what he's talking about, or he's not very good on camera, or he doesn't cover the right stories. And then later on, like you get all of those judgments, you know, coming back on you where you see these comments like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy's not very good on camera. And you see that in the comment section from the trolls and stuff. But some of it's not just trolling. I mean, some of it is honest criticism of your work. And so I would definitely say like, you know, that that to me is something that I, I wish I would have probably had a little more awareness of that it's not easy to start a YouTube channel. It's very rewarding, yeah. but it's a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of time. And you know, like we talk about new money gang, it takes a lot of seat time. Seat you time. gotta get in there and do the work, do the research, and then over time it'll eventually bloom and uh, you know, you'll become a pretty YouTube flower. Pretty YouTube flower, I like that, bloom. So Ben, thank you so much for joining us. This has been hopefully educational for anybody watching this that's looking to start a side hustle, specifically starting a YouTube channel, one that you can make money with. Remember, do something that you're passionate about, turn that passion into profit, and grow your channel. Grow your channel. Thank you